Now the device that you see right here is not Xiaomi, Redmi or Poco, but it is the Realme GT Neo 3T. We finally have this phone and you can see in this frame as well that we have the Poco F4 as well and 11X is repaired and that is on the way. At the same time, we have our good old Poco X3 Pro. So now we have four devices which support custom ROM. And trust me, I had started thinking that the custom ROM train has halted and nobody likes custom ROMs. But looks like development is picking up and it's going to be a lot of fun. Hello everyone, my name is Kalash and you're watching Phone Ops. Today is the complete review of Evolution X's latest update for the Realme GT Neo 3T. And this is going to be exciting because I've been using it since the last two to three days and I've got all the data that you need. So stay tuned till the end and this would be a great time to subscribe and hit that notification bell icon. We request you to share our videos with all of your friends and family who have read me, real me, these devices. We make amazing software videos, reviews and install guides on this channel. Now, without further ado, hello awesome people, let's get going. Alright, first things first, let's actually dive into the device and this beautiful ROM that we recently tried on the Evolution X as well. Mind you, there was a latest update for the Poco X3 Pro on Evolution X, that video is coming up as well. So let's actually go to settings first before we actually explore the ROM and talk a lot of things about the Realme GT Neo 3T. So if you go to about phone and you press on the Android version that is Android 13, you get all the particular details of this particular device. This is of course 7.9.6 Evolution X is official version which comes with July security patch right this is the baseband you have Mina Zuki kernel that is installed and the build date is the 6th of August and we are shooting this on the 8th of August so this is a very very recent build now one thing to note for this device if you're flashing the latest build the developer has supplied a firmware you need to flash it let me actually go ahead and show you that real quick so as you can see evolution x 7.9.6 Android 13 Fixed safety net issue, big highlight, safety net was a problem for banking applications. Flash through TWRP, OTA updates are not working, so please be very careful. Decrypted by default and this is the firmware that you definitely have to flash, otherwise your proximity sensor might not work and you might have some other problems as well. Now, apart from this, nothing else is mentioned, but trust me, there are a lot of under the hood changes and I did try Realme UI for two days before actually switching to this ROM and my experience was not that great. If it is, uh, you know, I would not say it is worse than MIUI, but it isn't any better. More or less, both of them are pretty safe. So the first thing that we'll talk about, of course, is default launcher. And as you might have seen in the Poco X3 Pro review, long press over here, go to home settings. You will see that you have icons, home screen, app drawer, recent suggestions and miscellaneous. All these options are present. If you press on each of these options, they will further give you more options for customization. So the icon can have post theme icons, that is one. If you go to home screen, over here as well, you will find a toggle for themed icons, that is number two. And in the app drawer, you have a themed icons label once again. So what this means is they've taken themed icons very, very seriously. And I kind of like that, but after a certain amount of time, at least me, I get bored and it becomes a little difficult to find the icons all of them in same color so yeah be very careful when you do that now apart from this if we talk about the launcher once again it does have its set of beautiful customizations so nothing is missing there and uh, pixel launcher wise this is better you get additional customizations but overall pretty smooth pretty solid good transitions good icon animations and stuff so no problems there as you can see the recent menu is pretty smooth and fluid as well you have a screenshot option over here which allows you to take longer screenshot and search in google lens as well at the same time you can directly search from google lens and you can clear all the applications and the ram management info is mentioned at the bottom this of course is my 6128 variant which i've recently purchased now to the left of course you have google feed so when you swipe Initially, there are a few hiccups. I'm not saying there are not. And this is uh, probably not as great as the Poco X3 Pro or the Mi 11X. Now, Xiaomi devices have better custom ROM quality. 
So the devs of Realme devices need to do some hard work to get it optimized as well. But apart from that, if we talk about the app drawer, the home screen, everything is pretty standard just like any other custom ROM, but you do not get a Realme camera. Like in Xiaomi devices, you get MIUI camera. Now in Realme devices, you have to make do with Google camera APK. Now all said and done, in day-to-day -day usage, you will not have any problems at all. Everything is working as expected, smooth as butter. The scrolling is absolutely smooth. The app animations are really, really fast. Matter of fact, if you go to the quick tiles over here, you will see that you have a ton of quick tiles available. That is a highlight of Evolution X and it continues on this device, the Realme GT Neo 3T. You do have everything that you could probably ask for in terms of customization. It's available and it's working fine. Now, Monet or Google's customization is definitely present as well. So no complaints there. And in fact, you have a few additional options over here, including dark theme, system fonts, system icon packs, shortcuts and app grid. So all of them are working as expected. As you can see, I've got a white wallpaper. So they do give you a, you know, papers app, which has Evolution X default wallpapers. One thing that is missing is curated culture. So if you go to wallpaper and style, and uh, change wallpaper. It would have been great to see Google's own wallpapers over here. Unfortunately, they are missing. Now moving on, let's actually dive into settings here. And as you can see, it is pretty standard stuff. You have the username details over here of your user account and you have directly search option over here. Along with this, if you scroll, you have a very, very sort of Google-ish feel over here. But the good thing about Evolution X as always is the Evolver. Now, as I've said multiple times, if I were to cover this entire custom ROM menu, it will take 10 minutes on this menu itself. So you can have a look that these options are available. They give you a ton of options for customizing and you will notice that I've you know almost enabled all of them I've played with each and every option so that I can tell you okay there is this bug there is that bug and before this update there was a bug wherein you know if you're on the always on display screen like this one and if you use the fingerprint it would not work but now it works most of the time. So themes, status bar, notifications, quick settings, power menu, gestures, lock screens, buttons, animations, miscellaneous. Everything is there. You can go ahead and customize to your heart's content. Now, if you go to apps, you get a very, very comprehensive game space as well. This is going to be very interesting for people who like to run benchmarks and play games and stuff. But benchmark numbers are going to be... Uh, surprise let's wait for that anyways you have options like in-game call what exactly you want to do you want to put it on the reject or answer notification mode can be selected ringer mode can be changed over here you can block or unblock a full screen event you can keep the device awake lock gesture disable automatic brightness disable swipe screenshot and for games like uh, you know vgmi disable usb debugging now one thing to note over here is i had added games over here but after a reboot they have disappeared so i'm not exactly sure if they are you know these are bugs but i have added benchmarks and that's when i've ran the benchmarks right now next important thing security and safety so when we talk about content consumption unfortunately this shows wideone l3 for some reason earlier it was l1 but maybe after this update something happened so that is disappointing but if we talk about security well safety net is passing absolutely fine so there are no problems as you can see so your banking applications your google pay upi everything will work as expected right now let's talk a little bit about the battery numbers shall we add left this with always on display all night and as you can see over here you know i mean you can have around six to seven hours of screen on time which is decent for a 5000 milliamp hour battery now the good thing here is it comes with support for super dart charging that means when you charge it 20 to 75 percent it took very very less time that is 17 minutes so in 20 to 25 minutes your device will be charged from 0 to 100 without generating any heat which in my opinion is an excellent thing now all said and done let's talk about the benchmark numbers and the first one over here is antutu benchmark and to my surprise it scored a very good number 8,91,764 or 891,764 with a 5 percent drop in battery and a temperature increase of 5.7 degrees celsius overall pretty good experience but what about the other things so let's actually go to google photos here and let's actually talk about the screenshots that we have so even the cpu throttle test was amazing because we have 87 percent throttling which is not that bad 
we have an average score of 231792 gips which is excellent in my opinion and the highest score of 258000 so that is good now apart from this if we talk about geekbench single core score of 1304 and a multi core score of 3333 now I've not found any major bugs as far as summing you know up this video is concerned. There was a bug wherein on always on display the fingerprint scanner would not work unless you wake the device up but that seems to be fixed in the latest update. Security, safety net is fine. The only caveat here is the Wideband L3 certification and I'm a little worried how will that impact your media consumption experience. Apart from that you can slap a Gcam of your choice and you should be good to go. This is my first hands on experience with a custom ROM on the Realme GT Neo 3T. Now trust me there is an unlock bootloader guide coming up, there is a restore to stock guide coming up, similar things coming up for Xiaomi devices as well and it's going to be a lot of fun just like old days. You need to subscribe and let me know what we need to do different to make your experience amazing. For now, this is Kailash signing off at Phone Ops. I'll see you in the next one. Keep smiling. Take care. Goodbye.